recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff. This is Triviality. Hello and welcome to Triviality, the game where lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name is Neil, joined here with Ken. How's it going? Doing okay. Me and Jeff are just working on our new studio table. Oh, that's right. I saw some pictures you sent over. How's that been going? As uh, Michelangelo says, uh, we're just removing all the wood that isn't the table. Okay. I guess I understand that. Were you touching fingertips like the uh, that painting? Uh, me and Jeff? Yeah. We always touch touch tips. Okay. But you remove the wood, but you still touch tips is what you're saying. Yes, that's right. Uh, well, that's good. good. Glad to hear that. Jeff, how are you doing? Pretty well. Thanks. <laughs> Not after that. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> That's the name of my autobiography. Um, <laughs> those are our guests, which we'll get to in just a minute. But no, yeah, we're working on a little project. Uh, I found some reclaimed wood that would work nicely for a studio table. So we're just uh, we're making a table that would fit uh, the room well. So we're reclaiming the wood. Yeah, nice. You reclaimed the wood. Went to claim jumper afterwards. Got some takeout. Great to hear. Uh, Matt is not here, unfortunately. It is October. He wanted to be festive, so he is bobbing for apple. Uh, not any more than one apple. He's trying to socially distance himself, but uh, hopefully and he'll catch it. Neil, you're just barely here, right? I'm yeah, I'm barely uh, barely lucid and kind of barely here. I suffered a uh, mild concussion uh, not too long ago. Too um, many combat uh, combat sports, right? Yeah, I was playing rollerball with James Kahn uh, and uh, <laughs> trying to, to make a practice squad uh, for the Tennessee Titans because they have so many COVID uh, positives. So I was trying to see if I can get on the team. Now, now is uh, James Kahn in the first rollerball or the second rollerball? He's, he's in the original and then Chris Klein is in the uh, the remake oh, okay. uh, oh. from his American Pie fame and obviously didn't work out with rollerball. But I mean, I love you, Neil, but I feel like your remake of Miracle, Miracle 2, where you get a concussion like six minutes into the movie, isn't a very compelling story. It isn't, but the more compelling story was I got the concussion after watching Will Smith's movie Concussion. So, um, no, uh, you're the only one. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, no, actually, I, I'll, I feel bad, but I was helping Colleen with a video for her college, for her alma mater. They were doing a, um, a special Zoom performance thing, and uh, there was a, a dresser in the frame, and I thought it looked uh, bad. So I got on the floor to move the dresser, and as I was pulling it, we forgot that there was a lamp on top of the dresser, and it fell directly on the back of my head. Yeah, uh, that'll do it. Yeah. So, uh, but I, I'm going to just be color commentary today because I'm. Um, a little out of it, but uh, yeah, well, soon, we're Neil. glad you're, Thank you. you're well enough to even appear on the episode because not even a concussion, concussion. See, I can't even say it can stop Neil from appearing. Thank on you. The, episode. the the Iron Man of podcasting, the Cal Ripken of uh, triviality. There you go. Um, well, uh, we'll introduce our host, who's going to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting today. Uh, you've uh, heard her on many previous episodes. I'm not actually sure what number this is, but it's pretty high up. Definitely uh, in the Five Timers Club, that's for sure. Definitely in the Five oh, Timers Club. Well past that at this point. Hello, Emily Baker. <laughs> Hi, I haven't seen you virtually or in person in so long. I know. And in we masks, no less. I know. Not me over here in my apartment. You get to see my lovely lipstick color. Um, but no, it's so nice to see you guys. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for joining us. And you, you prepared a game uh, for us today with your Bob Barker microphone. Is that right? I, d I did. Yes. I'm looking very official. I'm playing the role. I'm going really like um, method acting on this part. So... I'm ready. Nice. And all of the pets are spayed and neutered, so that's that's most important. <laughs> yes, that's the most important part. <laughs> Just uh, stay away from Adam Sandler, and I think you'll be okay today. Um, we'd uh, <laughs> love to introduce our next uh, pair of guests. It was one of our favorite emails we received in a in a long time. Uh, John Rapp, uh, who is a rules guy enthusiast on Patreon, we appreciate his support. Uh, reached out as a birthday surprise for his wife Emily. Uh, and they are in Denver. How are you both? Doing really well. Thanks yeah. for having us on the show. Really looking forward to it. Of course. Yes. So uh, how does this rank as far as uh, birthday gifts go, Emily? Uh, it's pretty up there. I was very surprised. I didn't know that we could make this happen. <laughs> so I'm a little nervous. I'm very excited. Don't be nervous. There's no possible way you could embarrass yourself more than we do on a weekly basis. So it <laughs> should be all good. <laughs> I figure reassuring. we'll see how good the gift is once uh, we see how we place. Oh. Yeah, we might be like the lowest scoring, in which case it might be, uh, you know, <laughs> a terrible birthday surprise. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, so Emily and I transplanted into Denver, Colorado from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, I came out here for work. I manage a, a genetics laboratory out here in Denver. 
And I'll let Emily introduce herself a little bit. Yeah, I work remotely um, for a pharmaceutical company doing medical writing. And uh, so I was working remotely before the pandemic. Um, Excited to come along to Denver for the ride. We always wanted to live in Colorado. Um, We brought our dog Aspen. So um, we named her when we were in St. Louis. I know I see that face. (laughs) Um, And it was kind of a quirky, cute name there. And now it's kind of a, a on the nose now that we're in Colorado. But She's loving it out here. We're doing some hiking for social distancing and uh, looking forward to maybe doing some snowshoeing instead of yeah. seeing this upcoming winter. So, um, that yeah, it's been great. better than my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, oh my God. Um, so for the audience at home, uh, we have two Emilys on the show. So Emily Rapp, uh, along with John, <laughs> um, she's going to be known as uh, Birthday Emily. And then, uh, Emily, what is your name? Um... In, in the tradition of the Spice Girls, I'm going today I'm going to be Scary Emily. Okay. Not only because Scary Spice is my favorite, but it's also like October. I'm feeling very spooky. So go. I'm Scary Emily today. Very nice. I like that. That's good. So on, <laughs> on the note of uh, naming uh, people, we need our team names before we toss it over to the rules guy. So Jeff, what do you want to be? Table Bros? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's such a better name than Tip Touchers. So yeah. <laughs> no. Fingertips. No. Fingertips. Uh, we'll be the table bros. The old table bros. I feel like that is something in college towns you'd hire the the bros to come out and either move furniture mm-hmm. or build it. You know. Can I can I propose a team name for John, John and Emily as well? Yes, I'd please. love to hear. Since yeah. you're a couple and you work in a genetics lab, how about your Genomeo and Juliet? <laughs> Genomeo and Juliet. I love it. Oh, I like that actually. Yeah, very good. It's very hard good. to say, but Genomeo and Juliet. <laughs> yeah, give it a go. I hope you guys are going to keep track of those names because I can't probably say those words. Tab- table boys or table bros? Table bros. I also like table. I am going to probably just call you table boys. That's fine. That's, B-O-I-S. That's, that's, either is fine. <laughs> B-O-I-S, like skater boy? Yeah. Right, yeah. Emily, yes. what rules guy you want to hear from today? Let's do classic. Classic rules guy. Let's hear it. Right. The rules of the game are simple. 20 questions split into two rounds worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there'll be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter the final round with the points that they've accumulated and will have a chance to wager 0 to 30 points on five categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop. I am the cream. Yeah. The cream of the crop. All right. Well, uh, the rules have been uh, read. We have the, the rules are spoken. The rules are spoken. We have the table bros versus Genomio and Juliet. I might not talk too much, but if you don't hear me, I'm okay. Uh, they, will keep, they will keep me awake. Uh, Emily, take it away. Oh, Boise. All right. Here we go. Um, let's just get right into it with question one. Um, roughly 130,000 people have signed a change.org petition to change the name of Columbus, Ohio to what? We can lock in. Oh, good. Jeff knows it. Jeff may have signed this petition. <laughs> we had a guess. Well, we'll lock in with go, freedom go for it. Freedom? Yeah. Okay. Freedom I and uh, yeah. freedom. Yeah. And uh, Columbus, as we know, kind of a terrible guy. Do you know who's not a terrible guy? Guy Fieri. So uh, I believe this is Flavortown. It's a pretty good guy. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is. It sure oh, no. is Flavortown. <laughs> I had no idea. I'm in favor of Flavortown. They're trying to get 150,000 signatures. So if you're listening, you haven't signed this petition yet, please do. I really need this. I need this for me. <laughs> we need this this year to happen. I really need this to happen. All right. right, let's. Uh, we'll move on to question two. Um, who is America's most decorated winter Olympian? So we... We're really between skiing and snowboarding. So we struggled between Lindsay Vaughn and Sean White. Mm-hmm. But I think we're going to go with Lindsay Vaughn. We also discussed some uh, downhill skiing, uh, but we were thinking uh, Peekaboo Street. But then I said, oh, no. And we said Apollo Ono. Oh. Oh, oh no. Yeah, it is Apollo Ono. Um, <laughs> he, has only, he only has eight medals total. So America, like as far as being the most decorated winter Olympian, that's like, I mean, that's still a lot of, that's more medals than I have. But yeah, he has <laughs> medals. Well, he does have the Dancing with the Stars uh, trophy as well. Oh, my God. All right, we'll move along to question three. Um, the expression murder most foul comes from a Shakespeare play. I just need to know which one. Okay, Ken. So this is really easy because there's only one Shakespeare play where somebody gets murdered. Yeah. 
Wait, let's check. <laughs> let's check the chart in Neil's bathroom for the ninetieth time. All right. Um. So let's think. Uh, Murder Most Fall. Macbeth. Uh, would be a good candidate for this. Um, Are there any chicken murders? Hamlet would be a good candidate for this. I would murder most foul. I don't think it's Macbeth actually, because I know Macbeth pretty well. Yeah. I don't know Hamlet that well, but there's definitely some murderins. There's definitely some murderins in Hamlet. So let's say, oh, what about Julius Caesar or Othello? I don't think it's Othello. Let's say Julius Caesar. Okay. Just as a I, outside no, outside I, guess. I like it. Okay. We were going between a couple of different options, but considering that it's spooky October, we, th- yeah. we thought maybe Macbeth would be the uh, the right course. There's a lot of spooky elements. There are a lot of spooky elements in Macbeth, uh, and it's probably my favorite Shakespeare uh, work. Uh, we're going to take an outside guess and say Julius Caesar, since his murder was pretty foul. A uh, little disappointed, guys. <laughs> yeah, there's no points on that one. It's actually from uh, Hamlet. Oh, mm. I threw that and one I out think there it's too. The ghost so. of, it's the ghost of old Hamlet. It's still spooky. <laughs> yeah, it's I, just a different ghost. Yeah, I believe it's his, uh, the ghost of his dad saying that he was murdered and he has to, he has to solve his uh, his murder. Mm-hmm. That was definitely our top uh, contender for answer, but then we switched at the last minute. You so. did. You had it for a while there. Um, yeah, yeah and, you, and you switched it. Uh, also, oh. I believe a Bob Dylan song based on him on the line. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of my favorite expressions because I love to say it like a mud, most foul. You got to say it like very like very, very classic, very <laughs> Agatha Christie. Yeah. <laughs> but I just like to say it like that. Anyway, uh, question four: Winning a total of nine Emmys, this television program holds the record for most Emmys won for a comedy program in a single year. What show is it? All right, we're locked in. All right, we're locked into. We're finally feeling confident on this one. We're gonna go with Schitt's Creek. I know that they just swept the the recent comedy category. Um, yeah. All right, good show, and uh, Jeff and I agree that we think it's Schitt's Creek. Yeah, it was Schitt's Creek. They recently swept and uh, the comedy categories and won nine Emmys. Yeah, that's it, well it deserved. Really, it wasn't really satisfying. Coming. It's a great show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I loved uh, Eugene Levy's speech that he he said it took him his entire career to win an Emmy, and he had to play a straight man, and he's been playing goofy characters his whole life. Yeah, (laughs) really. It's so good. It's one of my favorites. I had to give them their congratulations in some way. All right, let's do a a science. Um, When the blood vessels and arteries in the very back of the throat, including the ones that take blood to your brain, constrict... It can cause sphenopalatine ganglioneuralgia. What is the common name for this? You okay, Neil? Do it. (laughs) (laughs) I just had Palpatine in my head the entire time. She said Palpatine. I lost it. You're you're concussed, Neil. (laughs) Is that is that brain freeze? Uh, could yeah, could be. This this does seem like it's a it's gonna have a cute. Well, I was hearing with like sphenopalatine. I was thinking maybe like like the, the soft palate. Yeah, and it, and it would constrict if it was cold. Yeah, so. that that makes sense. And it, yeah, it does hurt your brain for some unknown reason. So yeah, okay, sounds good. I'm guessing. Yeah, we're ready too. Um, we were thinking that it's something way cuter than <laughs> the ominous description, but we're gonna go with brain freeze. And uh, we too went with uh, a good old brain freeze, ice cream headache. Something like that. Yeah, everybody gets points on that. It is a brain freeze. Um, I work in neurology currently, so I, I'm pretty sure I've heard one of my residents talking about this, but they called it the full name, and it was very spooky sounding, but it's not. It's just a brain freeze. It's right. like uh, when I install a stadiometer in the hospital, which is literally a height measuring stick, Oh, which is what everybody <laughs> calls it. <laughs> oh, I thought that would be what they use at the NFL now with no fans in the stands. Do you, do you install it slightly wrong just to give everybody an extra inch? No, not at all. No? No, I have to use like a special calibrated steel bar <laughs> so that like, you know, people are measured exactly to height. Well, you're no fun. Well, the old... apparently <laughs> medications matter. The old, Jeff, uh, I just want to feel said, good about myself and my no height. Fun. And I think it's kind of rude of you to not... <laughs> Not give you that opportunity. The old table bros. Give kids the opportunity to be a little taller. The old table bros trying to get an extra inch. Uh, so the scores uh, <sighs> after five questions uh, are uh, Genomio, 
then Juliet with 20 points and the Table Bros with 40. It's still, it's, it's anyone's game here. Um, as we move into question six, what video game was jokingly codenamed Sonic's Ass Game during development? The name came from the player being forced to look at the backside of a character in a third person platformer, which was a new concept at the time. All right, so we are locked in. Um, what did you have? Um, so the first 3D platformer I could think of was Mario 64. So we just went with uh, Mario. Yeah, and I had almost nothing to contribute, so I agreed. Okay, Mario 64. We are going with something, I think it was a little bit earlier, and it's uh, Crash Bandicoot, because that was all from behind. Yes, it was Crash Bandicoot. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Yeah, we were trying and to think the new of... One, the new one just came out, I believe. Yeah. We were trying the to think of something that was game. entirely from a behind camera angle. And it was like, that really narrowed it down for us because we talked about Sonic 3D too, but that was kind of a side angle and camera for Mario was kind of all around too. So Yeah, you could you could move the camera, I guess. Also, so. I, don't, I don't think that they would call a Sonic game Sonic's ass game. <laughs> maybe, that's just, maybe that's just me. <laughs> Um, okay, guys, question seven. Uh, what is the small pocket in front of Levi's originally intended to store? Oh, I thought I knew I thought I knew this, but no, I don't. Yeah, we are kind of worried that that might be a trick question, but um, for simplicity, we're gonna go with what we think it's named for, which is coin. All right. Well, um, for some reason, I associate Levi jeans with the gold rush. So maybe uh, it's for little nuggets of gold. Um, unfortunately, no points. It was actually for pocket watches. It was for like minors, but it was so that they could keep track of time. Oh. So they put their pocket Not watch in the little baby riches. pocket. I talked John out of that answer, unfortunately. Yeah. I will say that entire time, I thought you guys were talking about minors as in young children. And I just realized <laughs> what you were saying. <laughs> gold Neil, Neil's concussed. <laughs> Child labor. Title of the episode today is Neil's Concussed. Oh, man. Uh, question eight. Uh, Pheasant Island, the location where Louis XIV met his future wife, Maria Theresa, as well as where Louis XV met his intended bride, Mariana Victoria, has, since a treaty in 1659, been co-administered by what two countries? This is actually where i uh met jeff too so uh, we we're lock locked in. in oh cute that's oh. nice that's not true a love story <laughs> table bros a love story the table boys <laughs> now, now i have two episode titles to pick from what should i do let's see it's terrible there's so too many for and i'm gonna make i'm gonna just keep giving you good t uh episode names so you won't be able to pick between any of them Shucks. and it's gonna be the longest episode title you ever have just string them all together okay <laughs> it'll be like dr strange love all right uh john and uh emily uh what were you thinking uh not much to be honest with you <laughs> i know i haven't heard of this island have you um no, no. um yeah we're, we're both kind of drawing blanks on this one so lock it in with a guess yeah we're just gonna go with our guests which is uh england and france well with uh louis the 14th i believe you have one of them uh france the other one is its neighbor spain mm. yeah it is france and spain i'm tempted to give like half points because you guys got france and that's one of them give them give give five, five points give them five all right. Give yeah. me a five. We'll take that's, our token that's half five. Of yes. <laughs> yeah, take five. I'm not going to snub it. Because that's, that's on a guest, and I'm impressed. For hundreds of years, they literally, every six months, hand control over to the other country. It's nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's do question nine. Prior to landing the role of Troy on Community, Donald Glover was a writer for what sitcom from 2006 to 2009? And we'll lock that in. Office, Parks and Rec. He kind of has some, like... Community came out. I feel like he's got some like nerdy tendencies. Yeah, I mean, if you have a thought, I here, don't like anything. I I don't really have anything to contribute on this one. I I'm a little embarrassed. I don't know. So we're just between really Office and Parks and Rec because we were trying to think what was popular at that time. So I'm gonna go Parks and Rec. Sure. Yeah. Uh, as much as I love uh, Donald Glover, me and Jeff were recently <laughs> reflecting on some of those old YouTube videos, who were like, whoa. <laughs> They're pretty <laughs> offensive. <Yeah>. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, as much as we would love to see uh, Troy and Abed and Liz Lemon in the morning, um, he wrote for 30 Rock. Oh, he okay. sure did. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. Um, right yeah, I don't know if Parks and Rec was, I don't know what year it aired. I, I feel like it was seven. later. 
Oh, seven to thirteen. Something 14 like that. Was yeah. Its run. yeah. Something like that. I was not watching it when it was airing. I think I was too young to care about it yet. I have and then to... I ended up loving it. By two by two thousand thirteen, I was on board. I have to say <laughs> that two hours for a little while where it was the office, thirty rock, parks and rec, and community was probably one of the best. Oh, that's solid. That perfect. Yeah, that was some and good. Was that Thursday <laughs> nights? Was that Thursday nights, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now my Thursday nights are filled with sadness. <laughs> it's must see TV. <laughs> How about rather not see TV? Um, anyway, let's move right along to question 10. A small percentage of the population has a genetic quirk that allows them to strongly perceive the organic compound aldehydes. This causes a soapy taste in the mouth after eating what herb? And we'll lock in. Yeah, we're locked in. Yeah, we're locked in. Did, did oh, your yeah. work in genetics help you with this uh, with this uh, question, or did you just um, know it? I'll wait to make sure I get it right first before <laughs> I answer that. I guess. So we want you to uh, go on the record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident. One of my friends, uh, I believe, has this uh, problem where cilantro tastes like soap. And we agree. We said cilantro. Yeah, it is cilantro. I only know about this because I knew a woman once that would go to Chipotle and ask them to make her rice with no cilantro in it, and they were always so mad. Yeah. Um, because she had <laughs> she had cilantro mouth. Um, I don't have it myself, I but I'm also not nope. a big cilantro fan. After the first round, it looks like Genomio and Juliet with 35 and Table Bros with 80 points. Uh, feel free to join everyone here, uh, guests and hosts included, over at The Crop on Facebook to find out all about our latest episode releases or say hello on social media at TrivialityPod, at Instagram and Twitter and MySpace. I don't know, that's just the concussion that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> okay. I wish. <laughs> Go That'd ahead. Be so Neil, good. Neil has become unstuck in time. Oh man, I'm like Christopher Reeve, uh, uh, but uh, not instead of a hotel. I'm just going to back to old teenage uh, bad decisions. What? He's like, was that a Superman it. thing? Or he was in a movie where he went back in time. Oh, okay. Um. All right. I guess we're do- we're gonna do a swing round. Let's do a swing uh, round. My swing round today is called Myth Busted? Question uh, mark. I'm gonna give you ten myths that the MythBusters tested, and you just need to tell me whether the myth was confirmed, plausible, or busted. Okay. All right, myth one. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. A person can fall through layers of awnings and survive. Number two. Driving backwards on an icy road is safer than driving forwards because of improved traction. An ultrasonic motion sensor can be thwarted by a bed sheet. Number four. A safe can be quickly cracked by using a stethoscope. Number five, a clothed snowman melts slower than a naked one. Number six, it is possible to ignite a pool of gasoline using only a cigarette. Number seven, a cowboy can shoot a hat off a person's head, sending the hat flying through the air without harming the wearer. Uh, Number eight, a car going fast enough can skip across water. Number nine, a ping pong ball moving at high enough speed can inflict a lethal injury. And finally, number 10, a rock kicked up by a lawnmower is as lethal as a bullet. We will be right back with our answers. After me and Jeff conduct our own experiments. And we are back from the swing round discussion. So Emily, if you want to take it away, we'll give our answers. Excellent. Um, so number one was from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. The myth was a person can fall through layers of awnings and survive. I think that is confirmed. Okay. We went with plausible, just guessing that there were enough conditions. Like if it was only one awning, maybe you would fall and, and potentially die or get seriously hurt. But with enough, you know, short enough distance and enough awnings, you'd be uh, plausible. Yeah, we remember yeah. the episode, but not the outcome. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure they dropped the dummy for, like through three awnings. And I think it did depend on like the height, but there were a couple times where like he did die, but there were a couple times he survived, so they did pl- mark it plausible. Okay. Um, number two, driving backwards on an icy road is safer than driving forwards because of improved traction. Ken and I discussed, and assuming like the tires weren't unidirectional, we think it's it's probably either plausible or confirmed or we went confirmed that you can drive better backwards we went 
busted based on the the midwestern logic of never get a front wheel drive a rear wheel yeah real rear wheel drive car um to take in the winter so we went busted uh yeah this one's actually busted sorry sorry table table boys table bros no it's okay um, we we could use a few points <laughs> <laughs> We're then i'm trying to, sorry um <laughs> Anyway, number three, um, an ultrasonic motion sensor can be thwarted by a bed sheet. So this is a myth that uh, never crossed my mind before, so I can't even like picture what it what it is. So we just said plausible. So Emily and I both had the, a memory of like seeing this episode, and I don't know if we're actually remembering it right, but like them going through a maze or like a constructed house with a bed sheet on, like and a ghost. yeah, like a ghost walking around a house, and I believe it was confirmed. Yeah, this one's confirmed. It's a very good episode because it's just like them kind of like walking through a house with like a bed sheet on and they completely get rid of the, the, the sensors. So fun, that fun one's fact, confirmed. Uh, just wear a bed sheet. You can get into anyone's Skype stream, apparently. So <laughs> apparently. So right <laughs> now we around. have the two biggest Mythbusters fans in the world, apparently, versus two guys who haven't seen Mythbusters since 2006, probably. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, well, hey, they, we need We need some W's, boys. Um, all right, let's go with question four. A safe can be quickly cracked using a stethoscope. Uh, I've seen the Italian job, so we said confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> While we haven't seen the Italian job, or at least I haven't, uh, we also thought it was confirmed. Yes, this is actually busted. Um, oh. a, steth- a stethoscope was not enough to hear what was going on inside the safe, at least enough to help them. It's kind of a movie, a movie trope. All right, number five. A clothed snowman melts slower than a naked snowman. Okay, well, we've been wrong about a lot, but we're going to stay with what we decided. And I, I don't think that's right. So we said busted. We we said confirmed, but we had um, polar opinions on it. I thought that the clothes might trap heat against the snowman and melt them faster but john made the great point that the snowman is not generating his own heat so we said confirmed the clothes snowman would melt slower yeah it is confirmed i told you jeff <laughs> i thought because i thought it would like reflect refract more yeah. light though yeah yeah okay and i said it's it would the insulate exact, the coldness the exact reason they mentioned um it traps it traps the coldness you know, it doesn't, the snowman, snowmen don't generate heat. So the clothes keep it Jeff, cold. Damn longer. thermodynamics. Okay. Next. <laughs> See, Frosty should have just uh, kept his clothes on that, uh, that sexy minx. Yeah. We shouldn't be, we shouldn't be <laughs> answering this based on snowman porn that we've seen. God, I, had, I had a massive brain fart in between what I was trying to say. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Neil's concussed more than usual. Frosty, Neil, the sexy we, we hope you're doing all right. <laughs> That's the oh my time. god <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> number six it is possible to ignite a pool of gasoline using only a cigarette all right jeff and i think we remember this one and we both said busted yeah we were uh, right there with you thinking it was busted it was plausible oh it was- god man you guys are really exposing yourselves um yeah. in terms of Mythbusters. unlike frosty <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i'm never going to recover from that image (laughs) um this one i'm pretty sure we're all on the same page but we'll see a cowboy can shoot a half hat off of a person's head sending the hat flying through the air without harming the wearer of the hat yeah let's not let's not say that we're on the same page with anything because right now we haven't gotten a single one of these right but we said busted yeah, we, we are all on the we same page then. We also said busted. Yeah, busted on this <laughs> one. That means we're all on the same that. page. It is, it is busted. <laughs> Hooray. You can't do that. It's just not possible. Yeah, we figured the um, bullet would just pass through the hat. Yeah, exactly. It would pass through the hat. Or if, it, you know, you got to have really good aim or that or that cowboy's getting, getting got. So <laughs> um, anyway, let's go on to question eight. A car going fast enough can skip across water. Um. God, I hope it's confirmed because that's what we said. We went with plausible on this one. We thought that there might be enough factors 
um, given what car they're using and how much it weighs versus John's point that, uh, go ahead. I just could also see the Mythbusters just putting a rocket on the back of a car and just trying to get it to launch across a lake. So, yeah, we went with plausible. This one's actually confirmed. The video mm. of this one is wild. Um yeah, they, they sh- I'm pretty sure they send it off a ramp, and you can see the car skips like two or three times. It's crazy. So, I would, so what's the difference between confirmed and plausible? Plausible is when they set conditions beyond what you would expect to ever see in real life, yeah. but they can make it happen? Right. Like, oh, it okay. is, it could happen, but it's not likely. Okay, I'm just trying to distinguish. Right. Okay. I also wasn't imagining, and see, they're much cleverer than me. They put, like, rockets on the back of a car. I would have built, like, a giant sling catapult thing to try and fling it like a rock. Sure. And <laughs> Jeff, we can barely build a table. Let's, let's not pretend like you can build a Triviality remakes shot. Mythbusters, and it's just Jeff doing <laughs> like that. I would, be, I would be getting hurt a lot. Yeah. You are not a professional. Uh, all right. Let's move on to question nine. A ping pong ball moving at a high enough speed can inflict a lethal injury. Uh, we said this is probably busted because we think the terminal velocity of a ping pong ball is too low. I'm immediately seeing like some kind of giant vacuum contraption now that like super accelerates it and we're totally <laughs> wrong. <laughs> uh, no, I actually think I happened to just watch this episode somewhat recently and they make a giant air cannon. Uh, so not too far off, but it is busted if I remember correctly. Yep, this one's busted. I don't know if you've ever gotten hit really hard with a ping pong ball. Maybe it's just me. It does hurt very bad, <laughs> um, but it's it's not lethal. So, all right. A rock kicked up by a lawnmower is as lethal as a bullet. We're saying this is plausible, depending on the size of the rock. We also went plausible, depending on the size of the rock and potentially where it would hit the person. They actually marked this as confirmed. Um it terrifies me to this day. Uh, well, after the swing round, uh, the Genomio and Juliet team of Birthday Emily and John managed to uh, pick up some nice points here. So they're at 65, and the table bros are at 95 going into the second round. Um, then let's just hop into the second round with question one. Which of the following is not one of the original Beanie Babies released in 1993? Chocolate the Moose... Mittens the cat, pinchers the lobster, or legs the frog. All right, I'll trust you because I only had the spider and the bumblebee and the Tabasco and and every single beanie baby. And Jeff is a secret beanie baby hoarder, and this is his intervention. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to lie. There was a point in time where I owned fifty of the maple beanie <laughs> babies with the Canadian flag on them. Um. <laughs> Young, Why? young Jeff was making a killing as a kid. So Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember I had the original Tabasco that ended up being worth a lot of money, and I, like, football hiked him right into the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, there was a point at which I think you could get, like, $1,500 for that. Yeah, thing. that's a shame. Yeah. All right, uh, we're locked in. We went, well, I had uh, several Beanie Babies, and I remember the idea that you should hang on to them because they were all going to be worth so much money one day. Um, But we singled out Kitten as the one that is more pet-like and went um, with Mittens the Kitten being the non-original. Okay. I remember the lobster being pretty early, and I think the moose was early. We thought that the frog, Legs the Frog, was later. Mm. Um, It was actually Mittens the Cat is the fake is the imposter yeah. good job yeah, yeah the lobster had like a couple different like runs where the coloration was different mm-hmm. you have like a yellowish mm-hmm. like an orangey and then like a darker red and so like depending on which one you had they were super valuable legs the frog was the uh, beanie baby who was a member of the rock is that right yeah i think so <laughs> <laughs> i already think the name legs the frog is so good like i don't know what's a frog have legs sure Done. Like they say, they <laughs> without thinking about it, they just went with their first gut feeling. It's pretty much what they did on all of them, though. Chocolate the moose. That's classy. What I color mean, is he? Uh, chocolate. Oh, it's chocolate moose. Ken. It's like a play chocolate on... moose. Yeah. Oh, I'm the biggest idiot on the planet. <laughs> I just got okay. another layer for me too. <laughs> of chocolate moose. Um, 
of chocolate mousse. Ooh, I'm craving that now. Like a hazelnut praline. Anyway. I'm craving uh, <laughs> lying in my childhood bed with my beanie babies in simpler times. Right now. <laughs> in the before times. Oh my gosh. All right. Let's go into question two. What does it mean when an animal is said to be crepuscular? Animals that can be described this way include ferrets, bobcats, and mosquitoes. Uh, we can lock in. Thinking about especially the ferret and mosquito, we were just going with something about not traveling a linear path, like they, they weave around um, or move in like circular patterns or something, moving in a nonlinear pattern. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure I remember this one being animals that are really active at uh, twilight. So it's funny that Emily said I had a light bulb moment because uh, they don't really need them. Nice. Uh, yeah, it is that they're most active at dusk and dawn or the mm. twilight periods. Okay. Jeff's always thinking about twilight. So I think Jeff is crepuscular. Once it passes a certain time of night, you just won't hear from Jeff. <laughs> That's true. Jeff is... <laughs> I'm old now. Jeff is a crepuscular and my job is more person. demanding. <laughs> <laughs> Go to sleep at like 9 p.m. I'm so sad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm becoming crepuscular, though. I have to get up stupid early now. But it's neither here nor there. All right, let's move on into question three. Um, not including Super Bowls, what 1994 Olympic event shattered the record for most watched non-football sporting event in U.S. television history, drawing in 78.8 million viewers? So you know Olympics, is that winter or summer? I think that's winter. For some reason, I think it's hockey for the Miracle Game. I don't know much. We're not sports people, so this is going to be hard for us. I, I think, think I have. A, I think that that was a little earlier. Okay. My guess is Nancy Kerrigan, Tanya Harding. Oh. Ooh, okay. The, that's, yeah, that's a good guess. I like the that. The infamous knee situation. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm thinking the figure skating event, Kerrigan and Harding. Okay. We were actually thinking this was summer. I could be wrong, though. But I thought it was the women's team gymnastics. Um, so, do you know me? When Juliet were correct, it was ladies figure skating. Mm. Um, the, they, I don't think they caught my little hint, but I did say it shattered the record. Because this oh, is come on, Nancy Emily. Kerrigan uh, had, got her knee shattered. So, she, she came back and she got a, a silver medal. She got a medal. Yeah, that was um, uh, Lily Hammer, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, if, uh, if you accepted my invitation to see Richard Jewell at the movie theater when it came out, you would know that the Summer Olympics were 96. Okay. Yes, in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. In Atlanta. 92 yeah. is Barcelona. Mm. Uh, all right, guys. Question four. In Thor Ragnarok, Loki, disguised as his father Odin, stages a play about his own triumphs and heroic <laughs> death. What actor plays Loki in the play that he stages? Reluctant. It's so good. Neither of us watched the Marvel movies, so I this know. is going to be hard for us, I think. But um, you think it's a Hemsworth? That's I don't know. It seems like that would be the lesser a, known Hemsworth. Yeah, like an ironic twist in that. I don't is know. that Liam? I don't. I don't know any of the Hemsworths, so <laughs> I just know there's a few of them. Okay, well I'm going to go off of John's trail of thought here and just say Liam Hemsworth. So I think Liam Hemsworth is in the play, right? Sam O'Neill as, plays as Thor. So Sam O'Neill plays Odin. Sam Neill. Yeah. Plays Odin. Sam Neill, yeah. 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 And I think one of the Hemsworth brothers plays Thor in the play, but Loki is played by none other than Matt Damon. Yeah, it is oh. Matt Damon. <laughs> so yeah, I've not it's seen one that of my much. favorite yeah. random Marvel cam, like just people to put in a Marvel movie. It's just like, it was just very comforting to see Matt Damon. <laughs> Didn't Matt Damon have a cameo in, uh, what is it? Was it Deadpool 2 or something also? Yeah, possibly. He was one of, he yeah. was like a hillbilly on mm-hmm. the back of a truck. Yeah, he was in like a yeah. huge amount of makeup. Yeah. Yeah, but Thor Ragnarok is one of my favorite Marvel movies ever, so I really, had really to good. yeah Same. had to include it. Matt Damon loves a cameo. What? Oh, what? he does. Euro trip. I, I bet he likes doing it more than like big roles now. It's more fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just get get paid, get free food, just come in for a day, go back home. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Question five. In case you are in Illinois and are looking for a house, you can always look at the house that sits on the land where John Wayne Gacy's home once stood. He is known as the Killer Clown, but what was his clown name? Reluctant. Yeah. Come on, Sufjan Stevens, don't fail me now. (laughs) He's unfortunately not in that song. I don't think it is, yeah. He has a song about... Mm. Uh, Do you know? (sighs) I mean, I have a guess. What are you thinking? 
I put Smiley because I thought he was also known as the Smiley Face Killer. I thought that was his signature at the crimes. Um, Looks like just, I, I like that guess, but can you think of just any random generic clown names? Just Bozo. <laughs> it, was, it was actually Don't you Bozo. dare slander Bozo. <laughs> yeah. Putting Bozo As a Chicago out, I'm, I'm deeply <laughs> offended. Uh, well, you know when you threw the ping pong. I don't want to pong, disgrace the grand prize game. <laughs> the uh, Inside the buckets were just body parts. That's where the ping pong Well, if you could throw the ping pong ball at the right <laughs> velocity, cool it could smiling. be fatal. I, yeah. I don't have anything to contribute, so. Yeah, my only my only guess to link it to what I thought his signature was is Smiley. Okay, uh, we are going with what we think is the correct answer of Pogo. Yep, it's, po- it's mm-hmm. Pogo the Clown. You could hire Pogo the Clown for all your all your various events, and then buy his old house, apparently. And then but somebody actually bought it, I think, oh, around what 2019. A, what a person! God bless yes. him. My my dad once woke me up. It was like a December, and I was like sleeping. He woke me up and said, "Hey, you want to go see where John Wayne Gacy's house was?" No. <laughs> no, I did though. I did want to. <laughs> <laughs> so so we drove there. It's just a normal looking house now. I'm yeah. surprised so, it wasn't like leveled. I, I think that's what she said. It was. It's just the land that the new house was built on. Yeah. 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 Craig T. Nelson's oh, yeah. taught us that nothing bad happens if you have a house on land that shouldn't be yours. So, <laughs> um, so after the uh, the first five questions of the second round, uh, Genomio and Juliet are at eighty five, uh, the year of my birth, and then uh, Team uh, Table Bros at one twenty five. Just gonna let that poltergeist reference just slide on top of the. From now on, I'm just gonna make references and never say the title of the movie anymore. It's not no point. Just see if someone gets it, they'll, they'll have a little <laughs> warm spot in their heart. Yeah, we'll mention, somebody mention out there will be the like, crop. nice. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. somebody will appreciate it. Uh, okay, let's go on to question six. The atomic symbol for what element on a periodic table is derived from the Latin word plumbum? We can lock in. Yep. Yep. We're yeah, locked. we can lock in. Ooh, <laughs> nice. Quick you guys as want nice. To... You guys want to start us off? Yeah. Sure, go ahead. We think it's lead. Uh, PB. Oh, yep, symbol PB. Yeah, that's where we get the word plumber from, I think. We said lead. Yeah, it is lead. Good job, guys. Um, quick transition then into question seven. The estate of Mike Illich, the founder and owner of Little Caesars Pizza, currently owns what NHL team? which began as the Cougars in 1926, became the Falcons in 1930, and took its current name in 1932. Going to lock in here with a bit of a guess because this is, this is a tough one for us. Yeah, same here. Yeah, we, we really don't know. Again, sports, tough one for us. <laughs> sports is not our, our strong suit. Um, we thought that Little Caesars read like a Midwestern chain, um, so we just used that logic and settled on the Blackhawks. Uh, Blackhawks are original six, so we didn't think that. Um, but we're going to go with uh, a Canadian team and say uh, Calgary Flames. Um, no points on this one. It's actually the Detroit Red Wings. So you guys were right with okay. the Midwest path. It's just getting to that team. was The Red Wings are original <laughs> six, too, though. Hmm. They were originally the Cougars. Huh. I would have, that was actually where I would have directed you guys if it was a team question because I know um, Jets Pizza, I believe, is based in, in uh, Michigan, and I remember them and Little Caesars were based in Michigan because it was gotcha. like a rivalry. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, maybe you'll, you'll know question eight. Let's move on to there. So question eight is, in the early hours of March 18th, 1990, 13 works of art were stolen from a museum in Boston. To this day, it is considered the largest art heist and property theft in history, with none of the works being recovered. What museum were these art works stolen from? I mean, can you think of any museums in Boston? Because that's... I know, unfortunately, me, like... we cannot come up with the name of an art museum in Boston. I think one of the paintings that were stolen were the Scream, because I know that that's been stolen several times now. Um, but I cannot think of a name of a museum, so I think we're going to wing in... Uh... Going in blank here. I don't, yeah, I don't even think I have a guess. Okay. So these guys are tapping. Uh, we also are familiar with the event, but don't know the name of the museum. So we're going to go with the Boston Art Yard. <laughs> <laughs> what if I was just like, yeah, that's it. Uh, no, it's called the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum. So close. <laughs> that was so co- colloquially close. known as the Boston Art Yard. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Where yep. you can uh, bring um, in Duncan museum, for free. 
<laughs> the museum's currently offering a $10 million reward for any information leading to the recovery of the paintings and the sculptures. So if you know anything, I don't know, call Jeff, in, let Jeff, us you know. Wanna, we'll you want to return the 10 these million. and we'll, we'll go in on it? <laughs> we'll get 10 million. That would be a great triviality, uh, like, side hustle <laughs> show. Just us trying to find the, the painting to get the 10 trying million. Trying to solve the gardener heist. Or we could, we could become art thieves, mm -hmm. wait till they offer the reward so mm. we don't have to fence them and then we return them. That's a smart plan, yeah. I'm going to very slyly transition us to question nine. Uh, what shocking Wes Craven horror movie carried the marketing tagline to avoid fainting, keep repeating, it's only a movie? All right. So interestingly enough, I watched a couple of Wes Craven movies over the last uh, couple of weeks, mm -hmm. including uh, Last House on the Left, which sucked, <laughs> even though it's like a horror classic. Neil, what do you think? Oh, it's, really, it's like really bad. Well, it, yeah, it was like his first one. It's very uh, gratuitous. Yeah, it's gratuitous, but it, the like, remix the better. The tone is like bonkers. Yeah, the remix better. But anyways, uh, also Scream. Yep. I wonder if it's Scream because it's kind of meta, and saying it's only a movie is kind of meta too. They are uh, they are locked in, so feel free to tell us your Wes Craven fandom if you have any. Um, turns out we don't. I think is I know we're super struggling. Yeah, again. <laughs> round two is tough for us. Um, we're trying to play on the hint in the question um, about it being shocking. So we're down the road of something like, with electricity. Like Frankenstein but, or something like that? Uh, that doesn't sound right, I though. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I hung on to the part, it's only a movie, um, and was thinking arachnophobia, because I know a lot of people have fear of spiders. I'll throw so it. Whatever your, your guess is. The best guess I have is arachnophobia. I think we're going to lock in with that. We are going to say um, Scream due to its meta nature. So saying it's only a movie is kind of playing into that. Uh, so uh, good guesses from both of you guys, but it's actually Last House on the left. All right. So I have a special question 10 for us. Um, I have taken the lyrics from a song and I've put them through Google Translate 10 times with different languages. Love it. So I'm just going to read these new lyrics and you just need to tell me what song... It is meant to be. Okay. Girl in the city. He lived in his town. World. I'm sure he didn't have a son on the street. I'm sure her mother never told her why. Try downtown girls. We are locked in. So why don't you guys go ahead first? I don't think we reached the concrete <clears throat> conclusion, but we latched on to Billie Jean early on. Um, the line, I'm sure he didn't have a son. Yeah. And about uh, Billie Jean not being the mother yeah I don't, it, she, it's when the kid is not his son when spooky emily was reading it or scary <laughs> emily was reading it at first uh emily just stopped bit, birthday emily just stopped and wrote billy jean out of nowhere so yeah. i think we should probably go with that gut feeling yeah enough of the lyrics locked in on that for me okay. so uh billy jean crossed my mind too uh interestingly enough a band that i really really love called the books did this exact concept for one of their songs and it took me years to figure out what the original uh, song that they translated was so we thought we would just lock in a guess here and not waste too much time because uh, we don't have years so we said uh, journeys don't stop believing um good guesses from both of you guys it's actually uptown girl by billy joel I, oh, that was my oh. guess yeah i was that was, that was also in my head uh, oh okay yeah so i couldn't remember the, the lyrics city. so oh, i was just like she was living in a downtown world she he never was had living a in his own world guy. i'm sure she didn't have a son on the street, which I'm pretty sure translated from, I bet she never, never had, had a backstreet back street guy. guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just and said then Uptown Girls. Try, girl, try Downtown Girls. Try them. And, and if you care to uh, check it out, uh, the book song is called Free Translator. And if you can uh, put in the crop what song you think it's from, I'd be impressed. Yeah, it's one of my favorite kinds of questions to ask. It's so fun. Well, uh, going into the final round, that brings our scores, uh, Genomio and Juliet with 95 and the Table Bros with 135. They have those points to wager. Right before we throw it to Emily for the final questions, I just wanted to mention you can join uh, Spookies or Scary Emily, uh, Birthday Emily and John over at Patreon and become Patreon supporters. We appreciate their support. Uh, John and uh, Emily are uh, supporters at the Rules Guy Enthusiast level, which means they're going to be getting a specially curated character box and uh, poster uh, for being uh, supporters, as well as over 35 hours of extra content uh, as Patreon bonuses, crop drops, all that good stuff. So if you'd like to join them and help support the show, which is uh, much needed during this time, you can go to patreon.com slash trivialitypodcast. So uh, Emily, what are those categories? 
Um, we've got Ratatouille, Up, Coco, Moana, and Bolt, because I couldn't think of a Pixar movie that has to do with dogs. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All the wagers are now locked in, so let's hear those questions from Emily. Uh, All right. So for the category Ratatouille... Charcuterie is the French term for the art of preparing and assembling cured meats and other meat products with an assortment of toast, fruit, cheese, and sausage. What is the term for French appetizers consisting of sliced or whole raw vegetables, which are typically dipped in a vinaigrette or other dipping sauce? Uh, For category up, which two countries that share a border have the furthest distance between their capitals? For the category Coco, the Grammy Award for Best Disco Recording was added in 1980 and then removed the following year due to the backlash against disco. What triumphant 1978 single took home the lone Grammy Award for Best Disco Recording? For the category Moana, in what sport do teams compete for the America's Cup? And then for the category Bolt, because I couldn't find a Pixar movie that has to do with dogs. Trump is the first president in 130 years to not have a pet dog in the White House. Obama had two, George Bush had three, Bill Clinton had one, and George H.W. Bush had two. Name three of the seven dogs of the presidents that I just listed. And I will also include Bill Clinton's cat, because I like Bill Clinton's cat. So that makes eight pets to choose from. Okay. We'll consider these answers, and we'll be back. All the answers are now locked in, so let's hear those questions one more time, and our teams will give their final answers. Um, So for the category ratatouille, since it's French cuisine, um, charcuterie is the art of preparing various meats and cheeses and toast and fruits and things. Uh, So I needed to know what the term is for the French appetizers consisting of sliced or whole raw vegetables that are dipped in vinaigrettes or other dipping sauces. All right, we wagered 20 on that one. Uh, This was very difficult, and we don't know, so we just said a relish. We also wagered 10 points, um, and we love charcuterie. We love food, so we're hoping it's crudité. Yeah, it is crudité. Nice job. I'm a big charcuterie fan myself, so. Yes, indeed. It's very bougie. It's so bougie, but it's, like, also so easy. Anyway. (laughs) That's the thing I want to get good at this year is making charcuterie boards. I want to get really good at it. Um, well, look no further right. than uh, your local table bros. They can uh, build one for you. Table bros, build me a charcuterie board. <laughs> Actually, my uncle is a professional like wooden spoon and charcuterie board maker. Is that real? Yeah. You know someone? Oh, wow. oh so cool. I know a guy. Oh my god, hit me up, hook me up with your guy. I need, right, I need we'll this. Do. We'll do. Need this information. All I have is like Kraft mac and cheese in my fr- fridge, so I need <sighs> to start getting on it. All right, guys, for the category up, since they travel around the world, which two countries that share a border have the furthest distance between their capitals? Um, I'm gonna call an audible because I definitely know this one. So we wagered twenty on this one, and uh, Ken and I had locked in an answer, but. I had something stuck in my head and I couldn't get it out. And I think I know why. And uh, we said that this is actually Russia and North Korea. Oh, that's good. That is really yeah. good. So we discussed Russia. We did. We did discuss Russia, but I didn't think about their borders uh, in Asia. But we went with something a little closer to home, thinking the United States is pretty big and Mexico City isn't all that close to D.C. So we went with Mexico and the U.S. Um, the, the table bros getting the points on this one. It is Russia and North Korea. I couldn't, I couldn't get out of the head, my head there. Why was I thinking about how short their border was? And then I remembered that actually as Beijing is pretty far North. So Mm. North Mm -hmm. Korea is actually kind of like East of that. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, for Coco, since it is a musical movie, Uh, The Grammy Award for Best Disco Recording was added in 1980 and then removed the following year because people did not like disco. What triumphant 1978 single took home the lone Grammy Award for Best Disco Recording? Yep. Unlike the Grammy, uh, we wagered 20 on this one. Unlike the Grammy, uh, which will not survive past that one year, we said uh, I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor. We also picked up on the triumphant hit 
and went with I will survive. And we wagered yeah, 10 on that. Yeah, that is Yep, that's the correct answer. It's I Will Survive, the only only disco Grammy. So sad. All right. Uh, all right. For the category Moana, um, what sport do teams compete in for the America's Cup? Uh, we wagered another 20 on this one, and we said sailing. So uh, we wagered 10 points on this one. Not really sure where to go with it, <laughs> but we ended up with uh, surfing. Yeah, it is sailing. Um, the, the Moana category yeah. kind of gave it a little hint, but she does sail around with the Rocks character, whose name I can't remember right now. That's uh, um, Maui. Maui. There it is. I've only seen the movie You're welcome. Once. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> that was good. Um, and finally, for the category Bolt, because I couldn't think of a Pixar movie that had to do with dogs, um, Trump is the first president in 130 years to not have a dog in the White House. Um, so I asked you to tell me the names of the dogs that either Obama, George Bush, Bill Clinton, or George H.W. Bush. And then Bill Clinton's cat got an honorable mention. Okay. Uh, for our last uh, 20 points, we said Bo, uh, Socks, which I believe is the cat. And uh, the last one we could not come up with anymore. So we said Aspen. <laughs> Aspen loves the shout out, by the way. Um, oh. We wagered 30 on this one, going all in on dog. Um, we also knew Bo and Socks. And for the third one, we picked Buddy. Yeah, so 30 points going to uh, to Ginomio and Juliet. Uh, so Obama had Sonny and Bo. Um, and then there was Miss Beasley, Spot, and Barney. Um, Bill Clinton had Buddy and Socks, the cat. And then... Um, H.W. had Millie and Ranger. Oh, I knew Ranger. Right. Now that I hear that. That's a good dog name. Well, uh, great final round there. Um, and uh, it looks like Genovio and Juliet uh, were able to break 100 and had a great score of 125. Uh, but uh, with 155 points, today's cream of the crop are the table bros. The cream of the crop. Nobody does it better. Yeah, good job, table bro. Table boys. Yeah, good game, guys. That was I, I fun. thought we were going to lose that in the end. Yeah, it seemed like it. <laughs> it was yeah, it's a very hard close fought game. by our competitors. So thank you for joining us. Indeed. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. Good, I'm glad we oh, did too. We we had a, a great time. Um, Emily, we've been calling you birthday Emily, so uh, we wish you the happiest of birthdays and uh, are glad that you were able to join us. Uh, you as well, John. Thank you for setting it up. But uh, any last words from both of you? Any shout outs? I'm gonna leave it with shout out to Aspen. Sorry she lost you some points, but glad she made a, a feature in the game. <laughs> Um, I think Emily said it well there. I'll just leave it with that. Thank you, guys. Uh, and yeah, and really appreciate you guys working this out with us and uh, making the surprise happen. I think Emily's pretty pleased with it. So I appreciate yeah, it. Awesome. It's been really fun. No problem at all. Join us again anytime. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, spooky slash scary. Emily, thank you for joining us. Uh, any final shout outs or uh, thank yous? Anything you'd like to, to throw at us? Uh, you know, thanks. Um, my boyfriend, Justin, helped me write some of these questions. I can't take all the credit. And then just shout out to RuPaul's Drag Race for giving me serotonin for the past two months. Yeah. Hey, there in you case go. RuPaul, in case RuPaul is listening. <laughs> Who's you never to know. say? You never know. They, they, they might. You never uh, know. You never know. Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for joining us, especially all three of you for being Patreon supporters. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, thank you to Ken and Jeff uh, for keeping me awake, making sure I don't uh, fall into a deep sleep. And uh, Matt, we hope you got that one apple that you were bobbing for. Uh, my name is Neil, and that was Triviality. What? Are you guys hearing that too? Yeah, what was that? I don't I know. Not, oh, I don't know what happened. I thought you guys were just like, <laughs> no, like like it just started playing we're while we were casually chatting in another language. <laughs> oh my god, that was the scariest thing ever. <laughs> <No>. Yeah. <laughs>